Good afternoon. Thank you for watching Hobby Hi-Fi. Today I'd like to, uh, here we are, uh, let's see, September 11th, I believe. Um, I wanted to discuss with you uh, this simple subwoofer that I purchased probably 10, 15 years ago now, made by Velodyne. The uh, model number is VX10. And um, I've got nothing but good things to say about this company. Uh, 10 or 15 years ago, when I was looking at subs, I was uh, intrigued by a company that I kept hearing about that uh, seemed to specialize in subwoofers. Um, there's a couple of companies like that, I believe, uh, REL. Uh, and there's probably several, several other companies that do just uh, sort of focus on subwoofers. But... Uh, this particular company has been around for a while now, and um, I was pretty impressed to hear that they do just subs, and so I thought I would try one out. Now, this was a budget line at the time, and um, I can't imagine that I paid any more than $200 for this thing brand new. And um, this is a 10-inch woofer. It's ported in the back. It's got a 100-watt amp, I believe it is, um, built into it. And it's got uh, left and right inputs, which we'll talk about that in a little bit, and your standard speaker level inputs. Uh, it's also got a phase switch uh, that will allow you to, uh, to make that adjustment if you feel like uh, the timing is a bit off, which is uh, something that uh, takes kind of a trained ear, but a lot of times if, you, if you've got some, uh, something with some DC, you know, if your bass is not sounding quite right, Go over and uh, change your phase uh, and uh, see if that might uh, uh, punch that bass up just a, a notch. And generally what that means is that uh, this woofer is in fact pumping at the same, at the same uh, rate, at the same time as your, your satellites, uh, which is what you want. So phase can be an issue. Um, I like the fact that it's got a phase adjustment on it. From time to time, you do encounter uh, phase issues where, for some reason, there is a, an inversion going on where uh, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the cause of that is, but uh, interesting little situation there anyway. Uh, but this, uh, this sub, like I said, is... Uh, is pretty impressive for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's 10 or 15 years old, like I was saying, and it's got a, it's got a sort of a really typical vinyl wrap, and there's a couple of scratches on this, you know, but it's got a bit of a, uh, a nice wrap though to it. It's it's a bit rugged. It's a bit maybe thicker than some. It's a bit, um, you know, maybe rubberized or whatever they did, but they they had adhered it nice so that this thing is, you know, not showing a whole lot of signs of age for being as old as it is. Um, so so this is a, a backfiring subwoofer. A lot of times you'll have a port in the front that will be a front firing. Or if you, um, you know, have uh, some of these actually have a down firing woofer, which is an interesting uh, situation also is that pretty much just beats right into the ground below. Uh, but I, I kind of like the, the front facing woofer, um, to allow that, uh, that air to sort of dissipate out in front rather than straight down. It, uh, it makes good sense to me, but, uh, anyway, your mileage may vary on that one. Uh, but one thing to note here is that, um, these use a foam surround, and uh, typically after five, uh, 10, 15 years, these will start to erode. Now, I don't see very much sign of erosion on this, uh, on this set of foams here, and I know we've made a little bit of progress in the past, uh, you know, 20 years on uh, the quality of our, our foam. I believe they're using uh, some sort of an ether foam or whatnot that may be a a bit of a hybrid that might be giving us a little bit more durability out of our foams. But uh, that's one reason where I I typically like to choose rubber surrounds in uh, any woofer that I'm buying uh, just to avoid, you know, having to re-foam these. Although that does look like a standard foam. And that's, again, a 10-inch, like I said. Uh, I believe the specs on this are somewhere around the range, maybe 29 to uh, to 200, something along the, those lines. So it's not going to be your uh, your uh, end-all, be-all as far as frequency response goes. You, 
you know, your real expensive subs um, will will hopefully get down to around that 20, 20 hertz range where you do more feeling it than you actually hear it. Uh, that's approaching our the the uh, the bottom ability of our our hearing range at that point. Um, so this one here is um, never let me down, I have to say. And so I just wanted to give a a quick plug for Velodyne. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot of reading into the company. Uh, I'm sure that they are making things in China these days, like almost everybody else. But uh, somehow they've been able to maintain uh, strict quality controls and, and make good products year after year. I believe that they've come out with a, a newer model uh, in this Econo line called a VX10. I'm not sure how much longer, how much after this one came out that the uh, VX11 came out. I also think it's, it is still a 10-inch woofer, but I'm not positive of that. Don't hear about too many 11-inch woofers. Uh, but um, not sure uh, if that was any improvement or not, but I got to say I'm, I'm pretty happy with this darn sub 10 or 15 years later to have it, uh, have never had any issues with it. To always have it uh, be uh, giving me that uh, that nice quick punch and that clean clean sound and uh, something that feels like it was well made and has served me very well. Um, and just wanted to put in a plug for sub satellite systems in general. And um, one thing that uh, having a subwoofer allows you to do is to is to run these smaller speakers like this. Now these are not real small speakers. These are sort of average bookshelf. But uh, you can tuck these away in a corner somewhere. Or you can hang them from the ceiling, and um, you know you can do a little bit more with these with the size of speaker. Uh, and then what you can do is if you wanted to hide this sub somewhere on like say underneath that. Um, that desk, you know, you might even be able to do that, tuck it away in a corner somewhere. Um, but what you're going to get in that situation is you're going to get the, the ability to not only have some more flexibility with the placement of your speakers and how it relates to your room and your listening area, uh, but I've noticed that uh, satellite systems in general, one benefit that you have is that you're going to most likely notice a bit of an increase in the dispersion and the ability to throw a stereo image due to the smaller baffle size on some of these these uh, these smaller size speakers. Uh, one reason I always liked tower speakers was because they were typically six and a half inch, but they were had that narrow, more of a narrow, tall stature to them, so they would uh, they would still have a relatively narrow baffle. So what happens is that the sound will more quickly peel off the, the right and the left of that face of the speaker um, and giving you some, some nice dispersion with their highs specifically. Uh, your tweeters will, will be able to roll off, uh, roll that sound around the corners a little bit quicker and uh, will get into the air and will sort of envelop you a little bit. and. Uh, and uh, what Roger, my, my speaker guru, and I have come up with a word that we've, we uh, used to use quite a bit called disappear. And that they throw, throw a stereo image at you that you sort of will uh, uh, rise above the, the box itself. And so it will create a, an image in front of you that is, is much bigger than uh, 12 inches high and 8 inches wide so that uh, that sort of allows uh, the image to grow on you and uh, gives you a nice when you got both left and rights there um, uh, I've had some excellent sounds come out of some of these smaller speakers just because of the ability for it to to dissipate a little bit better in the air and to spread and uh, give you a nice crystal clean highs with a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of life. And, um, and that's what it's all about for me. So, uh, thanks again for watching and, uh, kudos to Velodyne. Keep up the good work and, uh, thank you for watching today. Thank you for my new subscribers. Thank you very much. Have a good day.